Have you ever wondered whether to use APIs or events? Which one is better? In this video, I will help you understand what are the characteristics and consequences of these two approaches. By the end of the video, you will be able to choose the one that fits better your scenario. Let's get started. When integrating services or applications with APIs, Service A, known as the client, performs a direct request to Service B, the server, which processes the request and returns immediately a response. This interaction style is known as request response and it's synchronous. It must happen all at the same time. If Service B is offline, the interaction fails and Service A needs to retry it later. There is high coupling between the two services. Most APIs are implemented in HTTP following the REST architectural constraints. They are very easy to develop, monitor, and they require no specialized infrastructure. And if you care about performance, you can use a remote procedure call framework like gRPC at the cost of a bit of additional complexity. When we leverage messages for integration, service A, known as the upstream, sends a message to a broker or bus. You can think of the broker as a sort of post office or post box. Service B, the downstream, retrieves the message from the broker at its own convenience. As you can see, this process is asynchronous. It means that Service A and Service B don't need to be online at the same time to collaborate. There is low coupling between the two services. This characteristics opens the door to three interaction styles. We can still implement request response as we did with APIs. We can also implement a fire and forget interaction where the upstream produces a message without expecting any response at all. Finally, we can implement the pop up pattern where the upstream service produces a message that is processed by multiple downstream services. As we can see, messaging is more powerful and versatile than APIs. Just imagine that the integration styles we just described are three out of many that you can find in this book. We also highlighted that messaging lowers the coupling in the system when done properly. And it does it not only at runtime, but also during development. You can define messages at the beginning of a project and use them as contracts. Each development team can code and test its own microservice without needing any other microservice to be available or mocked. The obvious cost of messaging is the need of specialized infrastructure. In addition, you have complex designs for architects, steeper learning care for developers, and a challenging observability at runtime. Anyway, let's summarize what we learned in now with the metrics. APIs are synchronous and support the request response interaction style. They don't require any special infrastructure. They are easy to design and implement, but they lead to high coupling within the system. Messages are asynchronous and support multiple interaction styles. They lead to low coupling in the system, but require specialized infrastructure. They are also more difficult to implement and monitor. So which one is better? And the answer is, it depends. However, we can define some macro-architectural rules that can guide us during the design phase. I'm going to share my approach that I based on top of concepts that I read on several books that I'm leaving down in the description. What I like to do is look at the big picture and make system-level decisions. If we do that, we can see that we have three types of integration. We have clients like browsers, mobiles, or third-party applications integrating with our system. I call this the client system integration. We have the necessity to integrate our own system with other systems. This could be systems written by other development teams in our company, or even third-party systems. I call this the inter-system integration. Finally, we have to integrate microservices within our own system. This is intrasystem integration. Let's have a look at each one of them. The client system integration is possibly the most critical. In this scenario, we want the integration experience to be 
as simple as possible. We need to define very clear interfaces that require no specialized hardware or software. APIs are the obvious choice here. If you think about it, all major players in our industry offer a developer portal with API specification to facilitate the integration with their products. This is a de facto standard. We can also use APIs for inter-system integration, for very similar reasons. Even in this scenario, we want to favor ease of integration, because we have our system needing to connect with a system that has been developed by someone else, possibly a third-party company. Additionally, these systems tend to be completely segregated from an infrastructure perspective, thus messaging would not be feasible in this particular setting. Finally, we have intrasystem integration, so we want to connect the microservices in our system, and that's not a fair call. We could use APIs because they are easy to implement and they require no specialized infrastructure. However, the issue with APIs is that they lead to tighter coupling in the system. And I know that as developers, we are fascinated by systems like Amazon and Netflix. But there is a reason why we call this a microservice Death Star. This is effectively an anti pattern where services are highly interdependent. And this leads to a system that is possibly slow, inflexible, and fragile because service failures can cascade to a large portion of the system. Messaging, on the other end, allow us to decouple the microservices in our system. The upstream component can publish a domain event without knowing which downstream components will subscribe to it. Additionally, in the systems, failures do not cascade aggressively. I think messaging is a superior choice in this scenario. However, there is a problem that we still have to solve. This is possibly the most important part of this video, so make sure to continue watching. There is the scenario where an external client performs a request to our system. We've decided to make this communication synchronous over API, which means the microservice serving the request must reply immediately. However, the replying microservice might need data that's managed by another microservice to validate or process the request. In this case, the logistics service manages the status of the shipments. It might seem that an API call to logistics is the only option to know the status of the shipment. We can solve this problem by using materialized views. Anytime the shipment status is updated, the logistics service publishes a shipment domain event. Other services can consume these events and store the information they need on their own database. This is a materialized view. The source of truth of shipment data is still the logistics, but our order service can store its own view of it. Now we can answer external client API requests without the need to contact any other microservice in the process. Let's sum it all up. APIs are preferred for their simplicity and widespread support. For this reason, we use them for client integration. Additionally, we also use them when we intend to integrate with a third-party system. On the other hand, we prefer the flexibility of messages or events when we need to integrate microservices within our system. This will create a system that is more resilient to failures and where the microservices are highly decoupled. As usual, keep in mind that there will always be scenarios where APIs are also the best choice for intrasystem integration. For instance, your system might be so simple that it does not justify the additional cost that comes with setting up a messaging infrastructure. Architecture is always about trade-offs. Use well your judgment based on your context. If you enjoyed the video, let me know in the comments like, subscribe, and share with your colleagues so that everyone can learn something new.